Good afternoon, everybody. There is a phrase, a saying that we will use here often, and it's sanctions create new markets. Economic sanctions or financial penalties, these compel decision makers to find new sources of supply. They find different ways to satisfy demand, new sources to satisfy that demand, new ways of doing business. Starting in 2022, we put on strong export curbs, economic sanctions, ec uh, export restrictions on companies that were selling the best semiconductor chips and also the manufacturing equipment for those chips to China. Companies that were exporting these chips or equipment to China. In the US, it began in 2022, and then it moved to Europe, expanded to the Netherlands and other countries last year, 2023. The objective of these sanctions was to slow down China's development of their own semiconductor industry. The United States and Japan does produce very advanced chips that are much faster and much better than what China could produce. Uh, there's a company in the Netherlands that makes the very advanced equipment that is used to put transistors on the chips, which is another important part of the chip making process. The idea was that if we could cut off Chinese access to the chips and also the equipment necessary to build the chips, we could thereby kill the Chinese industries that use them and the Chinese industries that could build them for themselves. That was the thinking at the time. So let's go through a little bit of background here. The chips are always getting smaller and smaller is better. Smaller means you can put more of them into the same volume. Uh, so if you imagine your portable phone or your iPad, if the chips get smaller, you can have more of them doing more things in the same volume. The idea is to always be making them smaller, but to have the same number of transistors or switches on them. So here's a graph that explains what I'm talking about. The chips are getting smaller, but the number of transistors are staying the same. Smaller is much better for another reason also. Electrons are flowing through all these transistors, electricity, and it takes less time for light to travel a shorter distance than it does a longer distance. And here is where normal people just, we shake our heads at how incredible it all is. There is a huge difference in computer performance and speed even at the speed of light, traveling these tiny distances inside of our smartphones. So how big or small, we could say, are these chips? Well, the sizes are measured in nanometers with respect to diameter. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. So we're talking about chips that are seven nanometers or seven billionths of a meter full of transistors that funnel electrons or electricity through our phones. The first most important measurement then is the size measured in nanometers. And smaller is better, smaller is faster. And our smart devices can do a lot more things faster with smaller chips. That's a little bit of background then that could be helpful as we try to understand the rest of it. A few years ago, China was buying a lot of chips that were 10 to 14 nanometers in size. And these were coming from foreign suppliers like NVIDIA and Micron and Intel and others. We did not know it at the time, but Chinese companies were already producing chips of this diameter and their yields were comparable to ours. When the trade restrictions were put on in 2022, we believed that the export bans would prevent China from ever building a seven nanometer chip. Remember, we didn't believe they were capable of producing a 10, but being able to produce sevens instead of tens is a huge technical advance. And remember again, we didn't think they could do the tens. Seven nanometers is important for another reason though. Going from 10 nanometers to seven was what was required to bring out a big increase in performance for cell phones and other smart devices. More power, more speed, 
more graphics. We needed smaller chips to make those things possible. And if we wanted to deny China the opportunity to ever build chips at seven nanometers, we also needed to stop the sale of equipment that they could use to make those smaller chips. And that is just what we did. We cut off most of the supply of seven nanometer chips and also the equipment that could be used to make those chips. So imagine the surprise across the industry to learn last year that China did produce a seven nanometer chip. That was back in August. And two months ago, they announced they would be mass producing a five nanometer chip for delivery to smartphone companies later this year. To summarize then, we didn't know they were at 10, but they were. They weren't supposed to be able to build a seven, but they did. Now they're at five. And going from seven to five is another quantum jump, by the way. It took Western companies over five years to do it, to go from seven nanometers to five. But if these reports are right, the Chinese did it in about six months. Now, some sources, some expert insiders do point out that the yield on the Chinese fives are not nearly as high as the yield on the fives coming out of TSMC. Taiwan Semiconductor is the Taiwan foundry that produces most of the chip designs from Japan and from the U.S. companies. But they weren't supposed to be able to do a seven at all. Then it was impossible that they would build a five. Now we're quibbling about how the yield isn't as great as it should be, which is missing the point. The point is that the sanctions haven't worked and it's finally now being noticed by investors back home. Worse, not only have the sanctions not worked, but experts are saying that the sanctions actually had the opposite effect, that the Chinese chip makers are better off now that we had these sanctions on, that they're in a position to produce their own chips and sell them back to customers around the world. So we'll go through now how this has backfired on us and we'll go through this piece here from the Investor's Business Daily. When we first put the sanctions on, China got busy. They were buying as much equipment as they could from anyone willing to sell it to them. They suddenly were buying half of all the equipment in the whole world to make semiconductors. Then they were learning how this equipment worked. Before, remember, they were merely buying the chips. The chips market was closed off, so they had to quickly figure out how to make their own. And it was the best year ever for companies that made the equipment that make the chips. Applied Materials is a company that makes the equipment to fabricate semiconductor chips. Their sales to China more than doubled, up 122% year over year. ASML, that's a big Dutch company, a Netherlands company that makes lithograph technology. That's a technology that puts the transistors onto the chips. ASML exports to China up 283%. That's almost a four times increase over one year. Other semiconductor companies here with big gains up double digits for KLA and LAM. Then what happens next? Well, what's next is bad news for everyone in the chips business right now. Now China has all this equipment. Now they figured out how to use it. And the next obvious step is to sell chips of their own. So GF and Micron are about to see lots of competition that wasn't there before. Micron was selling chips to China, but soon China will be selling chips to Micron's customers. It is true that the Chinese chips do not have the same yield as chips from Western companies right now, but industry experts, again, think that the yield from China is gonna be going up pretty fast from here and that they'll be competing on price for now and that the yield will be improved later and the Chinese chip makers will be making a lot of money, especially if they're going into their own Chinese made products. If these Chinese made chips are going into Chinese cell phones and Chinese electric cars, and then they're sold in markets here in China and other countries all over the world. These are 
these are huge consumer markets and they will now be using Chinese made chips now. And on the theme of supply chain, that's what this channel is all about. They've just taken over another one. Uh, Barclays. Barclays is a big bank in the UK. They're based in London. Their take is that US export controls are not merely failing to hurt China, but they're actually helping them. China is in a stronger position today than before. They're making their own chips instead of buying from us. And they're about to dump them into the market and take buyers away from our own chip companies. The implication here is that these sanctions compelled the Chinese companies to innovate and innovate fast. Well, how fast? 2022 wasn't that long ago, just two years ago. And in 2022, the Chinese couldn't build a seven. Today, they're building fives. Two years from now, they'll own the market for those two. And the reason for that is simple. People don't buy semiconductor chips. They buy devices that use those chips that need semiconductors to make the devices work. Customers buy cars or phones or toys or equipment or video games with the chips that run them. And the Chinese make all that stuff. They just needed our chips to make them faster and more reliable. Now they're making those chips too and at a fraction of the cost. Sanctions create new markets. If you're a regular viewer here, you should expect to hear that a lot. Thanks for watching. Have a nice weekend. Be good.